Welcome, my juice heads out there. Wow, I just heard my own ears. That was a little louder than I thought. But we have a special treat for you today. We're going to turn this motherfucker up. We got Sam Kinison in this video. Sam Kinison. Remember him? I do. I don't know if our audience does. Mr. Geo. How you doing, folks? You got the fucking juice. You know who I am. You know why I'm here. We're here to boycott the NFL altogether. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. oh, good choice on the song. What do we have? What are we doing right now? We doing... Are we going... Throwing it back old Live school? Live! <laughs> from the crib! We present to you... <laughs> <laughs> Episode 7! Episode 7, week 11 of the NFL. Boycott Club with your pal Juice Giorgio and your other pal, Mr. Orgo. How you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty swell. So let me ask you a question. We have no sponsors. We have no advertisers. What three fucking picks you got for me, bro? Oh, we're going right into it? Don't we always? We have to. Oh, what a good song, though. But we have to cut it off, right? Uh, yeah, because we'll get sued or something or taken down. <laughs> With all of our 25 viewers, right? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good song, though. I love that. Hey, by I, lo the way, I love the 80s hair metal. Quick shout out to Jack Tittle, who was right about Sidney Powell, who was right about Jenna Ellis and Mr. Rudy Giuliani. They're doing God's work right now. <laughs> and I guess we'll leave it at that. So what do you got, bro? So let's go right, me, in, right give, into the picks as we always goods. do. Give me the goods. All right. So first game I was looking at here, Falcons at Saints. Now the Saints are starting for, uh, I'm a little confused about this. They're starting Taysom Hill. Who over, the fuck is that? <laughs> he's an all-purpose player, like tight end slash receiver. Like the slash kid from Michigan. Running back. Yeah. Robinson. Oh, before we go any further, I do have to cut you off, and I'm sorry to do this very unprofessional. It's but fine. Go ahead. I would be remiss if we didn't do the Mike Francesa Diet Coke. That's actually a little bit different, though. That's the, the Coke Zero, right? It's close enough. <laughs> what's what's with the whisper? I like the whisper. Because I, I got so aggravated the last couple of weeks, I ain't going to get aggravated no more. You know what I mean? That's it. Just be calm. I'm just going to talk like a fucking guinea from now on. And, just, you know, just, I'd rather talk calm and quiet. Well, you look like I, like, I like the Will Ferrell look. Obviously, you're doing it again, which I think most we're, of our audience likes, we're gonna too. We're going to stick with it. You know why? Because every show needs a distinct fucking look. You and, you're, and, and you're just living the dream. Oh, dream ain't the word. <laughs> we got uh, Nick DiPaolo on tonight, live from Vegas. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that should be good. And uh, like Ice Cube, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> Today is going to be a good day. So what do you got for me? So the first pick, as I was mentioning before I was rudely interrupted, no, I'm just kidding, is um, the Falcons and Saints game. So I guess the Saints just don't trust Jameis Winston at all. They, That's a really big insult to him. They, huh? ju they just said, we're going to start Taysom Hill, who doesn't even really play quarterback. When they bring him in, it's usually for like a draw play or like a quarterback sneak. But now he's going to be throwing the ball. So, for that reason, I do like Atlanta in this game, plus five. Uh, five points is a big favorite for us. I don't even know if you call him a third-string quarterback. Who, who's home? It is the Saints. Wow. The Saints are never dogs at home. Right. No, the Saints are a favorite, but I'm taking Atlanta oh, here. Oh, okay. I'm taking Atlanta here with, five, with plus five. Um, on, the, on the road. I mean, they're starting an all-purpose guy at quarterback. I mean, can you really have that much confidence in him? And Atlanta's actually been playing better since they got rid of their coach, who, as we know, can't close a game out. So, with that said, I oh, like Mi Atlanta Mr. here Quinn. plus five. Mr. Quinn. Dan Quinn, yeah. That fucking clown. It, it's funny. I'm going to have to be looking for a job soon, and that guy had a job for so long and did nothing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, he did bring him to a Super Bowl. He blew it, but he brought him there. So did Jim Fossil. Look how that worked out. I always liked Jim Fossil, though. Oh, you got to love Jim Fossil. But, I was a Fossil fan. But that's the most forgetful on behalf of the organization Super Bowl ever. 
I like him though. He had balls. What other team tries as hard as the Giants to make you forget about a Super Bowl appearance other <laughs> than that fucking game? Yeah, I mean, because most Super Bowls, like you do, remember the teams that are playing, and that game is definitely under the radar. Nobody ever talks Bro, about it. Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer's got a ring. Probably one of the worst quarterbacks to ever get a ring, wouldn't you say? Trent Dilfer? <laughs> Either him or Brad Johnson. Wow, I'm surprised you didn't fucking say the E word. <laughs> oh, because that's right, because my boy Eli is a two-time. Eli is better. Two-time MVP. Eli is better than Dilfer. Don't get, I'm not that crazy. Well, I'm glad you finally speak the truth. What do you got for me for pick number two? So pick number two, what was the game that I was looking at? Let me take a look here. Uh, actually... I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, pushback on this pick. People are going to be screaming at me. Jets and Chargers. Did the That's char- a weird fucking game. I it, can't believe you're even touching that one. It is, but you're going to tell me the Chargers are a 9.5 point favorite when they have looked like garbage the past six weeks. I still and- I, I, I like their young quarterback. I like him too. Trust He's me. only in his first year. You got to give the kid a fucking break. No, I like him too. Don't get me wrong. And I know the Jets are bad, but come on, man. Nine and a half point favorite. And the Jets almost beat the Patriots last week. They actually should have beat them. They had a they blew a complete in the fourth Wait quarter. A two are weeks you, ago. Are you telling me that your New York football Jets are 0 and 9 <laughs> after not, a game that they should have won? <laughs> not my New York Jets, but um Next headline. Water is wet. <laughs> don't call them my jets but with all that being said i just don't see the chargers winning by 10 points that's a lot for a two of seven team um they're you know pretty much as bad as the jets at this point so why are we attempt why are they a 10 point favorite because the jets got to travel across the country but i will i will tell you this what's the spread again nine and a half i will tell you this i give me the jets give me the jets on that one that's I, what i'm taking and that's not going to be my lock of the week, although maybe I should make that my lock of the week. But I will tell you, um, and you don't necessarily agree with my logic on this one. I know you won't necessarily agree with my logic. Let's hear it. But the Jets historically have the Chargers number when they're underdogs against the Chargers. That's just a fact. Yeah, that's true as well. And I'll give you one. one I'll do you one better. You Let's know who it. has the Jets number? On the road in New Jersey against the Jets, <laughs> when all the chips are on the line? The Giants? The Raiders. Is it the Raiders? Oh, yeah. The Jets cannot be the Raiders in the playoffs. It never happened. It's never happened. Oh, in the playoffs. Okay. But the Jets have beaten the Chargers in huge playoff games. This Historically. Is true. Historically. And the Chargers are known for losing in the playoffs when they're the better team. Definitely known for that. And... This has nothing to do with the 2020 rosters or coaches at all. It's, this is just a gut feeling. Just like my gut tells me that 77 million people did not vote for Joe Biden. There's something <laughs> stinky, <laughs> like a bad pussy. There's <laughs> did I just say that? Did I just say that on the on a football show? It's all right. We're not censored. Wow. Yeah. 77 million people did not vote for Joe Biden. Prove me wrong. I'm sorry. Number. I'm sorry, Mr. Orgo. And uh, what's pick number three? Uh, and then the other game I was, I was looking at. Now, this game was kind of intriguing because I'm looking at it and I was so confused. Indiana versus Green Bay. The Colts are you a mean two and Indianapolis. A half point. Indianapolis. You're watching me. Indiana right now. At I know. Ohio State. I think it got it was in my head. Wow, this game is close. 42 to 35 at the big house. Huh? Why yeah. do they call? Why do they call Ohio State the big house? What is it, a fucking penitentiary? What well, is the it, a big, can? Well, the big house is Michigan. Oh, I'm sorry. The hor- Then Ohio State must be the horseshoe? The horseshoe because of the way it's shaped. Well, they're a bunch of horse fucking manure, in my opinion. I fucking hate Ohio State. Me too. They're such fucking pricks. What the fuck is the Ohio State? What the fuck is that all about? The Ohio State. What do you, and- what do you, you have the nerve to put a fucking, uh, what do you call that? When, when you put the or as or a before a word you call that something there's a name for that i don't know i wasn't too good in english class um whatever it is one of my juice that's out there will figure it out but you have the balls to say the ohio state really yeah. are they even that good at what what the fuck is ohio Let, let's take a minute here and let's 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 pick this apart let's dissect it 
What is Ohio even good at in the first place in anything? You mean as a state or at school? Both. As a state, not much. What like what is Ohio even known for? At least Jersey has a reputation for something. Yeah, I for mean, better or worse. I mean, it's not like uh, you know Idaho with the potatoes. It's not like Texas with uh, you know Longhorns and like you know. There's nothing that you could really associate with Ohio. Isn't that like where uh, Tommy Boy went out to yes. sell auto parts? <laughs> it's funny you said that. That was in my That's mind. That's the only thing I Ca- fucking know about. All Ohio. I know is Callahan Auto Parts. Which is obviously a fictional company. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Ohio is known more for fiction than fact. And this is just another fact from a from a from a simple Jersey guy. And everybody bashes the cities. Like you always hear bad things about Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Nothing Cleveland's good about Cleveland. And you know where the hypocrite, the biggest hypocrite in the world, Jack Tittle's boy, LeBron James is from, right? You know where he's from. Well, yeah, he went to high school in, uh, well, I think it was Akron, but he... He's from Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Okay? That's a suburb of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And Akron, he tries to compare Akron to, like, Nork. LeBron, you want to see a real fucking, real fucking rough and tough city? I've been to fucking Akron, Ohio, right? You know what's from Akron, Ohio? Queers without the steers. <laughs> and wannabes. You want a fucking tough city? You come to fucking Nork. You come to Brick City. But Brick. you won't go there because you have no balls, LeBron. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I fucking hate Le- Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, BLM anti-slavery because America is so evil, yet he makes millions and tens of millions of dollars each and every year off the backs of slaves in China. But he's Mr. Anti-slavery. How do you like that one? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how... So Ohio is the home of horse manure and hypocrites. The double H. There should be two H's when you spell Ohio. Although there's two good museums there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Football Hall of Fame. Fuck the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They don't even put Rock and Roll in there anymore. They put fucking... uh, If you make a a good beat, they put you in the fucking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. I think Notorious B.I.G. just got elected into the Hall of Fame. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Look, I love Biggie as much as anybody, but why is he in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah, I mean, we all love him, but exactly. How how did he get into that? That makes no sense. I've digressed. So what's pick number three, buddy? <laughs> oh, the third pick. That's right. Um, this is a, this is already the best show we've ever done. Yeah, it's definitely up there. So the third pick, as I was getting into with the Packers and the Colts, I was surprised to see the Packers as a the dog here. Uh, two and a half points. I just think, frankly, the Packers are the better team. And if you're going to give me two and a half points, that's great. So they could still lose by two and I win. I'm definitely taking the Packers here with the points. Are you a little surprised to see that Colts is a two and a half point favorite? I know they're playing well, but Packers team is playing pretty well too. Uh, who's home? The Colts. The Colts. Well, that's why. I'm being home still does matter a little bit. Maybe it, not as much. It, it's as it's in a normal with, year, without but. the crowd where the noise is not a factor. But, uh, I, I just don't see it. Indianapolis as, probably is one of the shortest trips that Green Bay can take. Oh sure, right? If they're going to go on the road and play somewhere, what is it? Maybe two hours away on a plane trip. If that, not even, dude. Because from here to Chicago is like a two and a half hour plane trip. Yeah, it's probably so, yeah, it's pro- especially with a private flight, it's probably an hour. Um. Wow. I'll t- I'll tell you what. Let's do a pick and lock for two weeks in a row. We're gonna go for broke. Give me Green Bay on the road. That's your lock. Give me Green Bay on the road. I like it. I like Green Bay here too. It's a tremendous pick. <laughs> It's very tremendous. We're going to prove we won this election. <laughs> I like your pay. I like that lock. I'm way better at my locks. And, and, and folks, I'm going to give you some uh, secret sauce here. I am way better at doing my lock of the week when I don't think about it. Right? Yeah, that's true. I'm 3-0 um, and o when I don't think about it. I'm 0-3 when I think about it. Yeah. Early, you were doing great earlier this year. And then as we were talking about it before the show, that's when you started getting these locks wrong. Right. Now, but let's although see. although last week was a tough one, I did not see the Ravens beating losing to the Patriots. That was very surprising. Nobody saw that. That's why I paid so well. Definitely <laughs> remember surprising. De Niro and Casino. No <laughs> one saw it coming. That's why I paid so well. <laughs> <laughs> very good point. I like the reference too. All right. So uh, 
give me an update on uh, college football for the week because this is a football show. It's not just about boycotting the NFL. We talk all things football and all things life, actually, here on the NFL Boycott Club. Yeah, we don't just do football. We talk about movies and music, right? Uh, anything interests you? I know your team, Notre Dame, is off this week. Yeah, they got a bye week. Um, but uh, I was looking at a couple. Actually, the game on right now that we're watching, Ohio State and Indiana, kind of close. Good fucking game, man. Kind of close. I'll tell, you, I'll tell the uh, audience this much. There's four minutes and seven seconds left on the clock. And the score is forty-two to thirty-five, so you can't. And and both teams are undefeated. Both teams are combined seven and zero. This yeah. is like the opposite of the NFC East. <laughs> Two good teams, right? And Un- that, unbelievable. And uh, we touched on Indiana last week, man. Indiana Hoosiers football four and zero, playing well against Ohio State right now, down by seven. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? The basketball days are over. It's about Indiana football now. And besides this game, the only game I was actually looking at, I think we spoke about it before, is a, there's a late game, Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. That should be a good game. Well, you love Oklahoma State. You know, that's for Barry Sanders won. <laughs> the Cowboys. I mean, you always say I love them. I guess I do. But I like their uniforms more than anything. And I for, like the- for ugly-ass colors, like, let's be honest here. Orange and orange, black. Orange and black. And gray. They do it well, though. It's the ugliest color scheme. It's even uglier than... Uh, Parsippany High School's color scheme, which is like gray or silver and red. Like, it's just so ugly. Whip, you know what's next? Whippany Park is equally as ugly. It's maroon and fucking white. That's maroon fucking, and white. That's that's fucking hideously ugly. That's a bad and one. I'll give you a fun fact. Back in the day, well, they still do this, but, but I'll tell you a fun fact about back in the day. <laughs> uh, and shout out to Jack Tittle because he'll know this. Back in the day when the Hanover Park Hornets and the Whippany Park Wildcats used to combine for they combine for a couple of sports. I don't know if you knew that. There's like a couple of like uh, low. I'll call them low key sports, like low lower key, like swimming and hockey. Right. That the uh, there's so little turnout that because they're the they're they call them sister schools because they're the same school district. Mm-hmm. They combine and they make they call it. So they have enough kids to play on those teams. Yeah. So they call it Park whatever. And when I was in high school, they had Park Lacrosse. And shout out to Jack. Shout out to Jack Tittle again. He's all getting all, a lot of shadows today. Jack, do you remember in the fucking 70s before I was even a thought in my dad's ball sack <laughs> when the Hanover Park lacrosse program got taken down for ringers? Bro, they had <laughs> ringers. They had college kids come in. <laughs> really? <laughs> and fucking <laughs> for a high school team. Wow. <laughs> and leave it to fucking East Hanover in the fucking 70s. It was corrupt already. <laughs> you think East Hanover's corrupt now? You fucking East Hanover's been corrupt. Was high school lacrosse that important? They need to bring in ringers to win games. I mean, what does it get you if I you win? Never heard an explanation, but they had a twenty-year ban, <laughs> and in the year two thousand, when I was a sophomore in high school, they brought it back. So I played, and it was a fucking cool. It was a pretty cool sport. But that was another example of Hanover and Whippany combining to make a team. I don't know. You played lacrosse only for a year, and. uh People were like, wait a minute, you're coordinated enough to play lacrosse? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I wasn't that bad, but uh, what are you going to do, I man? I can't see it. I can't see it. It's uh, just like my job now. They don't, you know, they don't want to give the good players playing time. They pick and choose favorites, you know? Yeah, it's all high school sports. It's all politics. So, and I'm not a politician, although I do support Mr. President Trump. Did I just say that on my football show? Yeah, I did. Oh, my God. We're getting very political here. So, anyway... The two high schools connect to make park whatever, park hockey, park lacrosse. And uh, so when they first formed the hockey team, they combined all four colors. So like Hanover's black wow, and yellow. Wow, really? <laughs> and Whippany is like fucking maroon and white. They had the ugliest uniforms in the history of ugly uniforms. So that's why I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. That sounds horrible. And then eventually, like when I played lacrosse, they just made it simple. They just made it black and white. And black and maroon, which actually isn't that bad. Black and maroon is black and a maroon. lot cooler looking yeah. than black and than uh than uh white and maroon. I can get I can, I can get down with that, yeah. So like, at least when I was in high school myself, they figured out just dumb it down in two colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I didn't realize those schools were that small. They couldn't even form a hockey team. Or Ho- hockey is a pretty big sport. Or a swim team. I mean, we weren't a big school either, and we had a pretty solid hockey team. They were always uh, tops in the state. Hockey's a weird one because if you're in high school and you live in North New Jersey and you go to public school, 
you got to go to practice at like fucking three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Who the I'll, fuck wants to do that? Because there's like like one or like, two ranks in the entire state. Dude, I thought it was crazy that I had to go to be on the wrestling team at five o'clock in the morning to fucking practice. These kids had to get up at like fucking two forty five in the morning. Yeah. Because it's all about the ice time. And, and then you got to suit up and fucking, yo, fuck that. Yeah, I remember them coming in, coming in like to school, like at sometimes like a half hour late um, in certain situations. Who I guess they the were allowed to. Who the fuck wants to do that? If you're that good at hockey, you should be going to Seton Hall prep or something. You shouldn't be fucking going to public school. Right. I mean, but then, you know, you got to pay for that and stuff. It's not cheap to go to those schools either. But hockey, yeah. I feel like, is one of those sports where like you probably need like family money to be good at it well yeah i mean that's one of the most expensive sports the the equipment alone yeah you know like fucking soccer is the cheapest sport so all you need is a fucking foot well <laughs> all the sports are like that i mean football basketball soccer all you need is a ball and that's it what else do you really need i'll tell you what you need you need two balls like president trump did i just say that again Another another Trump reference. Uh oh, we're gonna get kicked off the air. I iron balls. <laughs> All right, let's go around the league. So the first thing we have here on the docket. Oh, this actually speaking of the fucking ass fuck Ravens. Six and three Tennessee taking a trip to six and three Baltimore. Yeah, I mean Ravens really screwed us last week, coming losing to the Patriots. And, and Baltimore's bad. laying five. Can you believe this? Yeah, I mean against a competent Tennessee team. I mean, you know how you know how. Give me, the, give me Tennessee with the five. Yeah, I mean, you know how I'm, these, I'm taking um, that automatically. Fuck them. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, but you know, the NFL is very hard to figure out. One thing about the NFL: one plus one is not equal two. But so the thing you is, you can have a great game one week and a horrible game the next week, the one and thing, vice versa. The one thing I would tell you here on the NFL Boycott Club, and this is just between me and you and all the juice heads out there, we're right more than we're wrong. We just lose on the big ones, like fucking. Uh, like the opposite of Eli Manning. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the opposite of Eli on the uh, big. But game. when you do this week in and week out, you're you know you're gonna get some right, you're gonna get some wrong. But we're we're actually more right on our picks than we're not. We are. We're definitely up, and uh, I think NFL is actually one of the hardest sports to predict. As a matter of fact, I think after we're done doing the show, I'm gonna do a recount. That way, we know there's no fraudulent tabulations like we had in our general election a couple weeks ago oh yeah, did i just say that again yeah, you could do that all right next up on the docket four and five new england can you believe new england for as much crap as we talk about them they're only one game under 500 yeah i mean they really got it together the past couple of weeks and they're uh visiting houston Houston is actually getting two and a half. New England's on the road and they're fucking, they're laying two and a half in, in Houston. But Houston is, as uh, we like to say, as us North New Jersey Guineas like to say, garbage. Yeah, that uh, that Houston like, uh, defense. Oh, I'm, I'm going to bring up another reference. Sorry, liberals. Giuliani the other, the other day in his presser said, you know, and, and when you speak Italian, the word, the word for stupid in Italian is do not. What are you, a Stunad? <laughs> Fucking Houston is the Stunad of the NFL right now. Yeah, Houston is the defense is give me, especially give me, bad. Give me New England. Give him points. Yeah, you kind of have to take New England there. The, the bet on the Texans is a very risky bet. Now, we're going to bring you what looks like the lock of the week, and I'll call this my first ever trap game of the week. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Nine... And oh, Pittsburgh. Let me say that again. Nine and oh, Pittsburgh with Mr. Sexual Assaulter. <laughs> I, I sexual assault someone. I go to the can. This guy sexual assaults someone. He gets on his motorcycle and has another pitcher of beer and, and nothing happens. Unbelievable. Mr. By the way, I've never sexually assaulted anybody. Okay. I'm just making a fucking example. But, uh, you know, some people, I guess, are above the law. So give me on this trap game. On the road, Pittsburgh nine and zero going to one and eight. Jacksonville, Jacksonville is getting ten and a half. Give me Jacksonville with the ten and a half. Yeah, I mean, 
that's a lot of points. And Jacksonville has been playing pretty well. They almost beat the Packers last week. So even though they throw one and eight and they lose games, they're very close games. And you got to figure. I mean, Steelers are just playing amazing right now. They're nine and zero. Oh. I mean, are they gonna eventually? Are they gonna lose any games? I don't see it happening because every game they play is pretty much a blowout. But you got to figure they stumble one time, no? Well, you keep saying that week after week, but I think Pittsburgh <laughs> wins outright, but I don't think they cover. Right. So give me Jacksonville with the ten and a half. But when does Pittsburgh stumble? I mean, are they going to go sixteen and zero? Because if they do, that'll probably be one of the worst sixteen and zero teams ever. The last time Pittsburgh was nine and zero, I don't even know if Pittsburgh was ever nine and zero. They were never nine and zero. They had just they had that stat uh, the other day. This is their first nine and zero team. The last time they went this long undefeated, or almost as long, I should say rather, uh, because unlike the media, I don't want to give you fake information. But the last time Pittsburgh even was six and zero or seven, I think Pittsburgh made it to seven and zero. I think their quarterback was a guy named Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> That makes sense. So, Pittsburgh and Mr. Sexual Assaulter, you're due for a loss. It ain't going to be this week. You're going to be be this week. They're going to easily beat Jacksonville, but you're not going to cover. How about that? Yeah, let's let's go on a limb here. I I kind of agree with that pick. Let's take Jacksonville at the points. Ten and a half. Let's go, Jacksonville. Keep that game close. You can do it. Speaking of shaking your head. In just like a disgraceful fashion, like Tom Coughlin used to do. <laughs> the three five and one Eagles are playing the six and three shit Browns. The shit Browns. Oh, by the way, how many games have the Brown won since uh, Odell Beckham got hurt? I think a few. Probably every one. Because that's, that's they, my point. They've every, been on a winning that's streak. That's my point. That's my point. I don't care how talented you are. If you get into a fight with a kicking net and you lose, you're a loser. <laughs> and you will bring your team down with you because you're probably a fucking loser in real life. I don't care how much money you fucking make. And you're probably a loser in the locker room amongst your uh, peers. Yeah, I don't what think many do do you... I don't think many players respect him on that team. And uh, even on the Giants, it was the same way. The thing about the Browns, though, that team is just... <sighs> They're six and three. They barely beat Houston last week, man. Well, they, they're giving three to Philly. I like the I like the Browns to win by at least three points. Yeah, I mean, I, only because they're playing Philly, and Philly is horrible. That team is a joke. Well, I mean, we don't pick teams just to pick them. We look at who they're playing at. Yeah, exactly. The, the Browns win by default, as we like to say. Browns win by default, and that's all we have to say about that. <laughs> Next year, another fucking loser team from the shitty state of Ohio, where LeBron is from. Hey, LeBron, if you want to challenge me. Come on the show. You want to challenge anything I have to say about your shit fucking state? Come on the fucking show, tough guy. <laughs> Two six and one, Cincy Bengals. Versus Washington. Taking a trip to the Washington Pussies. That's a horrible game. That's the uh, not lock of the week. No. That's like, remember when ESPN was watchable, they used to have, they used to have the not top ten? The not top ten. This this is going to be on that. Yeah, this, this Actually, is a Actually, I'm game. not even making a pick on this game. Just skip it. Just skip it. Don't even address it. Just skip it. It's a bad game. Falcons at Panthers. My Falcons former team. At, no, you are reading it incorrectly, oh, sir. Oh, Lions. Lions, Lions at Panthers. Panthers. Okay, I stapled it too high in the corner. That's all right. We'll let, it, we'll let it slide this one time. So, an even worse team than the Falcons, the fucking Lions. <laughs> Going to Carolina. Yeah, I mean, this is another weird game. Two teams that are obviously, you know, they, Go, they got going, some wins. Going, by the way, to North Carolina that went red. Red is my couch. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, it's a tough game. I don't even know. I barely looked at this game because I glanced at it, and I was like, these are two teams that they're. I guess they're below average. I guess you give the edge to the Lions here maybe because they haven't been playing pretty decent the past couple of games. Skip it, too. Fuck these teams. They don't deserve the time. Now a team I do want to talk about, a team I do want to talk about, Mr. Tua. Tua and the Dolphins. And the Finns. Six and three. Who would have seen this coming? Did you ever think the Dolphins were going to be fucking six and three? Now, I gave the Dolphins a good shout out like on week two when they easily beat Jacksonville on Thursday night. I gave them a shout out on one of my solo shows called What's Trending. Um, but I didn't really think they were going to do anything serious, <laughs> but six and three, 
that's a very respectable record considering the franchise. I don't think they've been six and three since the, since they had Marino. I don't remember them being relevant since that one year where they ran the Wildcat with Ricky Williams and they won eleven games that year. Um, and that was probably well, like fifteen years ago. But uh, but prior to that, yeah, Marino was was their better days. And I, I even said this last week. Uh, they proved they proved me wrong. I thought the Chargers would beat them last week, and um, they wound up beating them by a good eight points. So they are six and three going and playing the Broncos. This could also be a trap game, but you know what? I'm really tired of betting against Miami because they prove me wrong every week. All right. And with that said, we're going to skip over the Jets and the Chargers because we talked about that. We did. Speaking of lock of the week, just bet against the Jets every week if you really want to lock. <laughs> Packers, Colts, we talked about that. What do we got next? You tell me what's next on the fucking docket. Next game we have is Cowboys and Vikings. Vikings have been playing good. Hey, and the Cowboys and Vikings, and here's your history lesson for the week. They're always going to be linked to one one man. Do you know who that man that links these two teams? One man. Is? Vikings and, and Cowboys. And one team got really ripped off. Uh, is it Herschel Walker? Bingo. It is fucking Herschel Walker. A great conservative man that supports our president donald j trump by the way herschel walker that donald fucking trump drafted to the new jersey generals from the usfl and then when the usfl folded he had to go to the cowboys because the cowboys drafted him also the same year that the generals drafted him but he went to the generals then when the usfl folded he went to the cowboys and by the time you know dallas traded him they had just a great guy and a great athlete, but just not the same Herschel Walker that President Donald J. Trump drafted to the Generals. And uh, Dallas got like, I want to say something stupid, like three first round picks. From Minnesota. From Minnesota for Herschel Walker. I remember that. And you know who they got with those picks? They Didn't they get uh, Smith, Emmett Smith, uh, Michael Irvin? Was Aikman part of that? Aikman was already... He's, Aikman was drafted in 89. I want to say uh, Emmett and Irvin came after that, but mm-hmm. they were all drafted like within a couple, <laughs> maybe two or three years. So I would definitely say the Cowboys got the uh, good, good, and, good end of that stick. <laughs> and you know who orchestrated that deal? Jimmy Johnson. There you go again. The great Jimmy Johnson. I almost feel weird knowing all this information about the Cowboys. I hate the Cowboys, but I guess during that time, they you were gotta so get, historic. You know what? I hate Democrats, but they're great at cheating. <laughs> Actually, they're not because they got caught. Oh, yeah, did I say that? Did I fucking say that? Oh, Democrats, you got caught. You got caught. But the Cowboys are not cheaters. They're just uh, savvy every now and then about making a good deal. Yeah, I mean, these these type of trades are crazy. I, I never understood them. The, the Saints did the same thing when what's-his-name was the coach, Ditka. Then he traded— Edward James. Like, no, he traded his whole draft class for Ricky Williams. But and, it had something to do with Edron James also. I don't remember James being a part of it, but Ricky Williams was like, he went all in on him. He was like, this is going to be our guy and basically traded the entire draft class. I mean, it obviously didn't work out because the Saints were garbage out for that. Right. But that's, I mean, that's and a that's crazy a shame trade. Because Dick is a great guy. He was. I mean, Dick was- also is a proud supporter of President Donald J. Trump. I'd like to point out. And he says, if you nail for the anthem, you're a fucking coward. And I say the same fucking thing. Anyway. Let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, talk about this game. Who do you uh, think is actually going to win it? Oh, I like the Vikings here definitely, because the Cowboys, as we know, have proven nothing over the past. Well, whenever Dak went down, was that week two or three? Cowboys have done nothing. The next game here, I'm actually looking forward to. I think it's a Sunday night game. If I'm looking at this correctly, it's the Chiefs at the Raiders. As you know, the Raiders are my second team now because they're in Vegas, which is my home away from home. That you know, everybody knows that. And uh, when we were at our favorite bar last night in Fairfield, New Jersey, they were showing like the Week Four game of the Chiefs and Raiders in KC. Yeah, and that game was fucking chippy. And you know what? I like anything else than a chippy football game. What's that? A medium rare steak. A bottle of red, a good cigar, and maybe a nice piece of pussy. Oh, did I just say that? Oh, and you know what I like too? Donald Trump. That sounds good, actually. So, with that said, 
I'm looking forward to this game. I'm not going to predict who's going to cover, who's not going to cover, because I'm not touching it. It's AFC West. It's divisional. But I like a professional football game that's chippy. Yeah, I mean, divisional game. That's why I watch football. You understand? Oh, like, it's great. Football is supposed to be fucking chippy. You're supposed to hit people late and fucking create penalties and shit You're because you want to win. <laughs> it's fucking football. That's what makes the divisional game so good. And this game was fun to watch. I never watch a uh, repeat game, but it was on last night at the bar. It was just fun to fucking look at. So I'm looking the, forward to this and one. And the Raiders actually beat them pretty good. I mean, I think they wound up winning by eight, but um, I think the Chiefs got a garbage time touchdown. So they had the Chiefs handled pretty well in that game. Yeah. And last but not least, what I think is going to be the game of the week that we talked about prior to the show. Yes. Go ahead. This is the game of the week for sure. Tell us all about it. Yeah, Buccaneers and Rams. I mean, it's a very even matchup. I'm surprised that Tampa Bay is giving three and a half. That's a lot of points for I feel like it's be almost like a pick em. It is a pick em. But they like Tampa the, with the three and a half points. Um, I mean, I wouldn't touch it. I feel like this game goes down to the wire. Of course it will. And, you know, shout out to Shaw McVay. For making the couch wet. <laughs> Anytime I have a female guest over. Well, now he's going to be on prime time, so everyone's going to see him. So, Mr. McVeigh, I'm a couple years your senior, but thank you for everything <laughs> you do for me. That's crazy that we're actually older than him. Nah, not really. I mean, there are a lot of good coaches start young. Not many. That's a that's a rarity. I'll give you another history lesson. A lot of people probably don't realize this, but Sean McVeigh's grandfather was an NFL coach. Really. And. He was working for John Gruden mm -hmm. for like $20,000 a year when Gruden was coaching the Bucks. His grandfather was? No, Mc Sean. Oh, well, he was probably like, what, in his 20s? He was like 22, 23, working for fucking the NFL already. Right. So it was a matter of time before he became a head coach eventually. I guess. But I, mean, I, give, I give him credit for being that young, getting right into the NFL. You know how intimidating that, that must be to like... You're an intern coach for a bunch of big fucking uh, muscle-headed fucking felons. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to gain their respect at that age. But and you... he's still younger than a decent amount of his players. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the show Hard Knocks. Well, maybe not now, but he was when he started. Well, no, he, there's definitely guys older than him on that team. Like, I'm sure there's veterans on that team that are older than him. But uh, if you watch him on Hard Knocks, he does command the room. You know, it does he's seem a good like coach. well, that's what a good coach does. Well, that's why I give him yeah, credit. You have to. You that's why the couch gets wet when girls come over. <laughs> you definitely, you definitely have to in, in that in that job. That's not an easy position at all. But there's some coaches like who don't even speak. Like remember that guy on the Colts, uh, Caldwell. That guy didn't say a Jim word. Jim Caldwell. Yeah, I mean, I guess they said he was a good delegator. For whatever that's worth, but you know, these this guy was like silent. To me, good delegator equals shitty coach. Well, they went to they won a Super Bowl with him. No, they didn't. They didn't. They won with fucking uh, your boy Tony. Oh, he went to the Super Bowl and lost, right? To the oh, you're no, you're right, Caldwell. Well, that's because he had fucking Peyton Manning. Well, obviously, Peyton's really the coach. It's the same thing with Adam Gase. When Peyton Adam, was a player coach. Yes, when Adam Gase coached Peyton Manning, wasn't Babe Ruth a player coach also? Uh, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Why? He was too busy being a drunk? I don't think he was a coach yet at all. But, um, yeah, I mean, with Peyton, they, that's why Adam Gates got uh, all these jobs, because of Peyton Manning. He endorsed him. Which is crazy, because but Peyton, obviously... But Peyton Manning only... What, here's what's crazy. Peyton Manning only knows him as a quarterback coach, right? He doesn't know him as a head coach. Yeah, I mean, I guess... A po but I think he was the offensive coordinator, no? When, when they no, he was the fucking quarterback's coach. He was supposed to be the, the quote, quarterback whisperer. That's why, right. everybody, that's why everybody thought he was good. But yeah, I mean, when it doesn't matter. When Payne's quarter the quarterback, he's calling the plays, not anybody else. He calls the plays. True. You know what else is true? What's that? I don't think we got nothing left in the tank. I think this has by far been our best show. Shout out to the Patriots in Atlanta right now marching for President Donald Trump. St hashtag stop the steal. Do oh, that's have, right. That was on. Do you have anything you'd like to plug before we call it a day? No plugs. Not unless we're getting paid for it. Well, let's plug hashtag stop the steal. And with that, folks, thank you, boycotters. Stay strong. We will watch so you don't have to. Good night, everybody. <laughs>